same time frame when the adopted dad of the million dollar man, Ted DiBiase, Mike passed away, and you actually ran through the crowd into the ring to try and save Mike. Mike theoretically died in my arms. Uh, when I first got to him, he had the latter, you know, who can really say, but he had a faint pulse. And when that went away, everybody knew. Was what gone. was it that brought it on? Was it the match itself? I remember he was doing furniture moving or something like that earlier in the he day. He had moved. He had moved his entire house. And you're talking four or five different rooms. Mm -hmm. And he'd moved that all that day. And when he came in, he was just wringing wet with sweat. And he went right into the shower. And right after that, he was headed to the ring. And you know, no one tells you when your time's up. Yeah. He spent a lot of time working with Ted when he was first breaking in, too. And his son. Now, have the DiBiase's, did they go through your training school in Missouri? Yes. Both of them, or just? Both Michael and Teddy. Teddy, an adversary of your and offspring on Raw. Hey, you know what? Good teacher, good heel, look what it got you. Fantastic. DiBiase family, again, that was one of the first that I know of, you know, quote unquote tragedies that you'd seen in the ring when you read about wrestling history and so on and so forth. That must have been, you know, difficult for everybody. Yes, it was. Uh, and for the people of uh, Lubbock, Texas, uh, it, that place went from a madhouse to, I mean, virtually a morgue, you know. Yeah. And, but that goes to show you how the wrestling fans really think. You know, they, they can be here and then they see this happen and they go the way they should go. And I've got nothing but respect for the people that have supported me my whole life. Without the fans, we don't have much. That's right. I know. I think you'd agree with that sentiment as president. I say that a thousand times every time I have a chance. Without the fans of professional wrestling today, there would be no professional wrestling. But you know, I have to say this, Mr. Race gave respect and he earned the respect that he has now. There's no question in my mind about Thank that, you. sir. Thank you. Take us through your mindset. May 24th, 1973, Kansas City, pretty much where you spent the early years in your life winning the NWA World Championship for the first time? Actually, in the ring, I don't think I could, I could explain it. Uh, it was something that anyone in my position at that point in time, that was the one thing that they all wanted. It's the one goal that they were all trying to achieve. And when it happened, the reaction of those people for the, let me back up just a little bit. Until that happened, everybody in, in that town and anything around there all hated me. But that m magical moment flipped it the other way and it just it just went on from there. Uh, now, that, at that was point, kind of a short-lived one yeah. the first time around. But Dory Funk Jr. and you were both heels at this time, were you not? Yes, we were. Was that rare uh, at the time to have heel versus heel title matches? Or you don't see much of that in every, 2009, at least. Depending on where you were back then and who the who the two people were, uh, they knew that. Virtually, I couldn't be beat in Kansas City. Mm -hmm. And they're bringing in the guy, the only guy that had won every time he'd been in Kansas City. So it was kind of like stacking uh, to a pinnacle. And when it happened, it was like somebody had plugged that building into uh, from a uh, battery run something right into the electricity. It just popped. And Did I'm it help? Thankful to be a part of it. Did it help the territory at that point with having the sure title that, change like that, where they were so scarce back then? Sure, that in does. Kansas City. Sure, it did. Uh, 
the champion comes into any place and he was there virtually for seven days. And for the next, that happened on a Thursday night, and I came back there on the, fo the following Thursday mm -hmm. against one of the guys that had, all, you know, had been there for a long time, uh, Danny Little Bear. And the people were right back to disliking me. They were cheering uh, Little Bear. Wrestling fans around the corner, around the world, I'm Dan Marotti. And I'm Mr. USA WWE Hall of Famer, Tony Atlas. The road to WrestleMania has begun. Wrestling fans are looking to add to their man caves. You got to see what we have in the eBay store. Check it out. Support Wrestling Insiders and keep wrestling legends working on eBay. Get this limited edition WWE NXT Johnny Gargano personally autographed 11 by 14 comic book style poster, a great addition to the collection of any Johnny Wrestling or NXT fan direct from WWE. Also comes with a mystery autographed 8 by 10 photo and an on-air shout out from WWE Hall of Famer Mr. USA Tony Atlas on Wrestling Insiders at your house. Get it now. Boston Wrestling Sports and the MWF explodes into a new year with professional wrestling content galore and need you to join our family. Every Tuesday night at 10 p.m. after our Monday Night Raw review, it's Wrestling Inside Us at your house with WWE Hall of Famer Mr. USA Tony Atlas. Wednesday nights at 10 p.m. after NXT and AEW, join rotating legends on Wrestling Insiders Special Edition. Every Thursday night at 10 p.m. after our NXT and Dynamite review, it's Marty Jannetty's No Holds Barred Sex, Drugs, and Rock and Roll Journey on Wrestling Insiders Party with Marty. Friday night after SmackDown, don't miss John Cena Sr.'s Wrestling Insiders Fabulous Fridays. Plus, look for classic clips, history videos, bonus live episodes, pay-per-view watch-alongs, and more. For less than a cup of coffee at Starbucks, get early ad-free access to our Wrestling Insider talk shows, our acclaimed studio shoot interview DVD library, and help keep wrestling legends working during the worst of times. Join our growing family at patreon.com backslash Boston Wrestling. Expect the unexpected in 2021.